I'm standing between you and lunch, which is never a good thing, but we'll move this right along. Um, how many of you recognize this? How many of you owned one of these growing up? An Atari 2400, right? My mom would say I burned many brain cells playing Pac-Man, Space Invaders, all these great things. Um, and I think it, between learning and games, there's an interesting intersection. I have to be completely honest. I was rather skeptical of the intersection for, for a long, long time. I mean, gamification has been talked about for maybe five or six years. And generally, when I thought about games, I thought about this. You know, maybe you take a Monopoly board and turn it into a learning game. Maybe you take you know, a game that's on TV or even zombies and apply that to a, a game-based concept. How many of you have done this type of thing in organization, sort of game-based learning? Experimented with that? OK. This is generally what most people think about when they think about gamification. Um, there's an emerging side of gamification, which uh, I've actually spent the last three years focusing on as well. It has different names. There's learning gamification, there's expertise gamification, structural gamification. I, I think the terminology will sort itself out in the next few years. But it's really less about the content itself, but it's taking the content you have and bringing it into a system where people can consume the content. And the metric instead becomes things like scores, badges, medals, those types of things. I believe there's a vendor here that works on that. How many of you have done this type of thing in organization, sort of this learning gamification aspect? Okay, so a few. And I think this is something that we'll see over the next four or five years really emerging is organizations thinking about, instead of just building content that's around games, but actually restructuring the consumption and tracking of, of content um, around this sort of gamification framework. But for me, there's actually a third type of gamification, which I'll talk to you about today, which is this idea around performance gamification. So it's less about the content itself. It's less even about consumption of the content, but it's more about how can we gamify the actual work and how people apply what they know on the job. And I'll show you some examples of that. But before I, I dive into that a little bit, have you ever had a credit score run on you to buy a house, buy a car, that type of thing? Probably pretty much everybody, OK. Um, credit scores, the way they work, it takes different factors into play. So for instance, you've got six factors in the Equifax Vantage score calculation, right? The first thing is, what's your credit card utilization? How much credit limit do you have versus how much have you spent, right? So that's one factor. A second factor is, uh, do you have any derogatory marks? How many accounts do you have? What's your payment history on those accounts? How old are those accounts? And then how many times have people looked at your account to see, you know, has this person applied for more credit? So there are these six data points that come together and converge into a number, right? So that's what we call our credit score. So the number in this case, H24, represents someone's credit worthiness. So companies, lenders, whoever it might be, will take this number into an account and decide whether or not you are a good person to lend money to. And I think that's a very interesting concept. What if you could do that for every employee you have in your company? What if you could generate a credit score for every employee every day of the week to quantify how they're performing the job? How many of you would like to do that or you think your business partners would like that? I think it's a really tremendous opportunity. And gamification, if you take the gaming out of it, it's really about data. And it really actually allows us to do this for every employee that we have. So let me show you a little bit what that looks like. Um, this is actually uh, what we call a reputation score. In this case, it's actually for our mattress employees. So these are the folks in the stores selling you mattresses that you would bring in your home. Every day of the week, we calculate what's called a dream score for each of these employees. It's on a scale of 0 to 400. We have different scales for different audiences. But for this audience, the business unit said we want it to be 400 because they have four components that comprise a dream score. And these are all business metrics. The first one is something called contribution per hour. It's a sales metric. The second one is balance of sale. The third is accessories per $100. And the fourth is exchange rate. Because right? if someone returns a mattress, they really can't do anything with it. We just get rid of the item entirely. So these four data points, just like a credit score, comprise what we know as a dream score. So in this case, this employee has a dream score of 376. They are ranked third out of five mattress associates in their store, and they're ranked 14 in their market. Every day of the week, they can see how they're doing against these, these four metrics that are calculated against this single metric. And the way this works is there's additional data points beneath that. It's not just the score. They can actually see how they're trending on a monthly basis. They can even go back historically to see how they did last September instead of this September. Um, just like you would on a credit score, you can sort of see your trending. Uh, this lower hash is sort of how you're trending against other people that are in your same job. You can also see individual metrics. So in this case, this is 
accessories per hour. For every metric we have, we set what we call a bronze level goal. So again, if you kind of use the gamification elements, sort of this bronze, silver, gold analogy, we want every associate to reach bronze. And if you reach, in this case, $12.60, you get 100 points towards your dream score. If you exceed that bronze level, silver or gold, then you get bonuses on top of what you would normally get paid. Right, so we actually tie in the gamification elements to the actual incentive structure of this role. You can also see below here, this is the return rate. This person has reached bronze, they've reached silver, but they haven't quite reached gold yet. So they won't get that extra incentive. You can also look at other metrics. For, so for instance, this is contribution per hour. They haven't quite reached the bronze level metric of 58 and a half. They're at 58.4. So instead of 100 points, they got 90. Right, so we take the individual components, the different, different data points, we weight them, we add them up, and that's what creates this dream score at the end of the day. And again, we have different metrics for different roles, um, and each business unit comes to us and defines what metrics matter to them. It's not me saying, look, I'll give you level one, level two data. This is about them telling us what data matters to their business, and us using that data to, to create data on top of that. So, why would you want to do this? How does gamification transform your business? I think it does it in some very interesting ways, and each of your businesses would probably adopt it differently. In this case, this is a retail scenario. So we've done some, some very interesting things to apply this, these gamification concepts to the actual business itself. This is a tool that we uh, use internally. It's called expertise planning. Back in the day, we'd say, everybody needs to take training on every new product. That was just the way it worked. Uh, what we do now is we say, instead of training everybody in your stores about, in this case, snowblowers, maybe we should be a little smarter about who gets what training, right? Would you train someone on snowblowers in Puerto Rico? Probably not. They're not the chance of them getting any snow is, is pretty minimal, right? So what we do is we actually go through the entire um, store structure, and we plan expertise for each region. And we even go further down. We actually go down to individual stores. So to give you an example, Arizona is a little bit of an aberration. It sits in the southwest. You would think we'd probably sell no snowblowers at all. There's one store in Flagstaff, Arizona. I used to live in Flagstaff, so I know this personally. It gets 100 inches of snow every year. So in this case, when we did our expertise planning, the entire southwest region in Arizona had no snowblower training. But that one store, we targeted expertise specifically for that store because we wanted to make sure that those associates could sell. right? So this is one way that gamification changes how you run your business, especially from a learning perspective. Um, outside of learning itself, I think the data that we generate as learning organizations can be used by the business in really interesting ways. So this is an example of a call center. Most call centers have something installed called an integrated voice response system. So when you call, like I called the airline yesterday, it said press one for reservations, those type of thing. That's an IVR, right? Um, most IVR systems today have a module built into it for competencies. Very few companies use those company modules, but the basic idea is if you tell us what this call center agent knows or how they're performing, we'll route the calls appropriately. It's genius, right? So if you have that gamification data, which we do have, we can feed that into the voice response system. So when you press one, instead of just going into a basic queue and just getting whoever you get, we'll route you to the person that we believe will be able to answer your call, right? Again, using data to transform the business. Another example is, um, let's say you've got a Kenmore side-by-side -side refrigerator that runs too long. You know, today you might schedule a service call, or to say if your car has a problem, you might go to a, a, a mechanic. You know, it's a guess going into it whether or not that person can actually fix that problem, right? In this case, can we use that gamification data to feed the appointment scheduling, right? We know that you have a refrigerator. It's a Kenmore brand, and therefore we know who in our workforce knows about Kenmore refrigerators and that model specifically. So can you find that person as part of that, that retail transaction, that scheduling transaction? So those are just some examples of how it can change your business. Now let's talk a little bit about how it can actually impact the business in terms of numbers and metrics. Let's see how this formatting works. Okay, that's readable, I think. Um, how many are familiar with Kirkpatrick's four levels? Right? Been around for many, many years. I actually sat next to Don Kirkpatrick at a book signing. Intelligent man, uh, brilliant. But Kirkpatrick's model has been around for 60, 70 years. Right? I think the really interesting thing about gamification, which surprised me, is the fact that it actually generates data that we can now use to enhance what Kirkpatrick started. 
right? Um, and specifically what I've talked to you about today, about learning gamification, I think sits somewhere in between normal learning measurement and behavior. And then this performance gamification piece sits somewhere between behavior and results. What's really important about this is that for the first time in my career, I've been doing this for 20 years, it's the first time that I can very, very easily connect learning with performance with business results in really, really incredible ways. So I'll give you a few examples. Um, this is out of a call center. So you can see the top graphs. These are all operational call center metrics. So the first one is agent interaction score. It's kind of a customer service metric. The next one is first call resolution. So if you call, we want to get that problem solved the first time instead of you keep calling back. The next one is net promoter score. That's another measurement of customer satisfaction. Um, what you can see here on the left, I apologize, the colors didn't make it in the copy, but uh, on the left, these are folks that are on the gamification platforms. On the right, these are the folks that were not on the gamification platforms. You can see over a period of a month that the metrics clearly trend in favor of the gamification side. Um, the metrics beneath here, this is actually sales metrics, so I can actually compare year-over-year -year data. Right? So the, this is the sales per hour for an average call center agent in 2015. This is now what it sits at 2016 because of the systems that we installed, which is a 15% increase in year-over-year -year sales productivity for that audience. And it's not just the call center side. We've actually demonstrated this in several other areas. So this is actually um, sales for our seasonal associates. Again, year over year, 2015, 2016. Um, this dotted line represents the start of an expertise campaign. So this is when we're gonna start pushing learning content out, say, you know, try to build your expertise bronze, silver, gold levels. And we can see year over year, this lighter gray line is 2015, this upper gray line is 2016. You can see the same general trending in seasonality. You know, we sell a lot of certain types of seasonal products these first four or five weeks, but then it tails off but there's a clear difference between those two audiences from one year to the next year. This is another graph. This is actually from our lawnmower business over the course of about a quarter. The upper line are folks on the gamification platforms. The lower line are the folks that are not or choose not to adopt it. Again, a clear trend in the, in the difference between those two audiences. Um, and I could literally do this all day long for every business unit I have. This is balance of sale for mattress. This is accessory per hour, or accessories per 100 for mattress. Um, the great thing now is that I own, I own both the learning data and I also own the performance data, but not from the HR perspective, but from the business perspective. So our ability to now correlate those two pieces of data is, is really, really powerful. Um, and that's really kind of the one key takeaway, I would say, with the gamification. It's less about Jeopardy games, Wheel of Fortune games. It's more about creating data that you can use to finally connect your business with the actual business itself. And the last piece I'll, I'll throw in there is really around culture. This is an interesting side effect for me beyond the data itself. Um, I actually think to move to a continuous learning culture, gamification is a great mechanism for that. It's a great tool and driver for that because what you're doing is you're not saying, hey, I'm gonna send you through an eight-week training program. I'm gonna put you through a two-week training program and continue to give you content along the way. Right? And I'm gonna measure you along the way and give you feedback on a regular basis. And that really is the underlying mechanism between, be, beneath a continuous learning culture, which I think is very, very powerful. So with that, I appreciate your time and attention.